Okay, so welcome back. Um, in part one of this series, uh, we talked about this uh, electrical engineering um, simulator software that we're going to be developing. And I encourage you to take a look at that. It explains what all this is and what we're doing and all that. I'm not going to go over it again. Um, but we're going to talk about in this video the most important part of developing this actual real world um, electrical engineering application. And that is the design and planning phase. Uh, if you have any engineering background, you know that that is the number one most important part of any project, especially something complicated like this. And we talked about all the complications of this um, in the first video. Um, but we're going to talk in this video, we're going to start to plan this out. And again, if you plan this out into like um, little building blocks, it makes it so much easier to put your code together because you've got a, a, a general framework, uh, especially in the engineering world, you've got actual equipment that has properties and it has functionality and methods. And you can start to see what you're going to do for classes and that kind of thing. So I strongly recommend that you take a look at this planning phase and give it some thought because it's really important for any, any project you're going to get involved in. So um, first of all, let's take a look at that. I'm going to run this just so you can see what it does. Um, you can see we're animating this image and we're having some inputs and outputs and things are changing. And um, Let's start to think about some of the components that we're going to need for this simulator. So obviously, the number one thing is there's a lot of UI stuff, a lot of user interface stuff going on. And, um, you know, we're kind of lucky here because I've already developed this. So it's kind of easy to visualize it because it's already done. But um, if you haven't done this, my suggestion is you go into some graphic software and you kind of draw out what you want your UI to be and what you want the inputs to be and the outputs to be and what you want it to do so you can get a, a good visual picture. Here it makes it a whole lot easier because we can see exactly what we want and we can tweak it a little bit. So um, again, the, the most important thing here is the user interface, okay? And you can see it's got a lot of components, it's got radio buttons, it's got this image that we update and every time step, in this case every second, we update the image and we update this um, list box or grid view and we output some um, debugging stuff and we have some inputs here. So there is a ton of user interface stuff. So um, if you, you start out, you, you, the first thing you got to do is draw a box to, to show the user interface stuff. Really important part of this. Now, um, when you start up, this is going to be a C-Sharp Windows Forms application. So when you start up your, your blank uh, Windows Forms, you're going to have your Form 1. So usually what you do in your Form 1 is you have, you initialize stuff, instantiate classes into objects, and of course you do your UI configuring and updating and event handlers, okay? And we're probably going to have a lot of event handlers here uh, for events to update this user interface and these different boxes and everything else. So um, what I'm going to do is I am going to um, put all of the UI stuff in the Form 1 and kind of keep all that stuff together and have um, all of the rest of the code, all of the logic and all of this uh, underlying code separated out of the uh, form and the UI, okay? And I'm going to have this, this blank box full of stuff that does the actual simulation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use events and static classes to communicate with the UI. So um, we'll do stuff to do the simulation behind the scenes, and it will issue events and We'll gather data from static classes to allow us to uh, update this UI and to calculate uh, the status of each of the devices and that kind of thing. Now, the next thing we want to think about is data, okay? So um, data files. Do we want any data files on our machine, right? 
So for this, um, do we want to have any like input data or output data that goes on uh, in a file? Like do we want a database? Do we want a text file or a CSV? And if you look at this, you can see, well, when I start up, I'm going to need some uh, default numbers that we put into these different devices for settings. So, um, you know, depending on how many devices you have, you're going to have a bunch of default settings. Maybe you want to have like a little database or a text file that stores that. And when you open up this application, it jumps and grabs those defaults. And then as we get the simulation results, we might want to output the results into a file. So um, we got to start thinking about, do we want any files associated with this on our computer, either input or output or both, or do we just want to keep it internal? So when you start it up, you just um, load it internally. You don't have any external files. You just load these defaults internally, and then you don't put anything out as output. Maybe we don't want any data. So we got to think about, do we want data files? In my case, I used both. It's a bit of overkill, I think, but you know, just as a learning experience, I've got a little SQLite database and also some CSV files. So um, that's one thing you need to think about. Now, the next thing we need to think about are these devices. Now, as I mentioned before, each one of these is an actual real, real world device that we're going to model and simulate, and they have um, functionality. In this case, they've got timers. Uh, for the circuit breaker, it has current sensors, which is going to mean we're going to have to determine if, for example, if the circuit breaker is closed and there are closed switches between the circuit breaker and the fault, um, if they're all closed, then that means this is sensing the, this breaker is sensing the fault. If they're open, then not. So we're going to have to put some logic in each device to determine if it sees a fault or if it should open or close. So we're going to have to think about um, how are we going to do that. Um, luckily, our circuit breakers and our automatic switches are very, very similar in functionality with some, some differences, but um, we can kind of lump them together as a uh, type of device, which will help us later on in we can, you know, like go do a for each through each device to find its status and that kind of thing. So again, we're going to be want to, we're going to want to be modeling these things as real world devices with real world components. Now, um, again, we're going to need simulation timers and events, a lot of them, right? Because as we hit the start button, we're going to every second we're going to have to check the status of each device. Is it open or closed? Do the breakers see the fault? Um, do the switches see voltage and that kind of thing? So there's going to be a lot of um, events and timers. Okay, so we're probably going to want to every second or every half second, we want to update the status of each of the devices. And then we want, want to send events to the UI to say, hey, update the UI and that kind of thing. So um, definitely we're going to want to have maybe classes of devices and then simulation timers and events and those events will interact with the ui now um the next thing is we're going to have a lot of helper classes all right a lot of helper functionality and that can be all kinds of things um we're going to probably be doing some lists and some arrays and opening files and all kinds of things that we can just have generic uh, functionality in like helper classes. Um, so, you know, with, especially with something complicated like this, guaranteed we're going to want a lot of helper classes to just do general stuff for us. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to want is a controller. And um, what do I mean by a controller? Well, somebody's going to have to control this simulation. All right. And if you think about it, the simulation every second or every time step is going to say, to, is going to tell each device, okay, figure out what your status is. All right. Are you open? Or are you closed? Does the switch see a voltage? If it does, then it will start closing. Does the circuit breaker see a fault? If it does, it will start opening. 
Um, so there's going to be somebody who's going to go through and um, check status of each device every time step and kind of control this whole simulation. And in the real world, in electrical power systems, they have a similar type of thing, a controller that is, communicates with the actual real world devices and says, hey, what's your status? Um, and it updates that uh, on a screen somewhere so people can see the status of all the devices. So clearly we're going to want some type of controller, uh, probably a class, all right, that, that um, has static, it's, maybe it's a static class that has a lot of data that everybody can access. So for example, if our device needs to know the status of some other device, uh, it can ask the controller and that kind of thing. So uh, something very important to think about how we're going to lay this out. Now, the next thing we're going to want is logging and debugging. Now, as you can imagine, the logic we're going to need to do this simulation is kind of complicated. So, for example, um, this circuit breaker is going to need to know if it's closed, is this switch closed? And is this switch closed? And is the fault on this bus? If all those are true, then it says, oh, okay, I see the fault and it can know what to do. So um, this logic is uh, guaranteed, I can tell you from my experience, this gets to be some very complex logic. And you've got multiple devices, each with its own logic. And it gets kind of confusing. Um, you know, at the same time, this breaker has to decide if it sees a fault. And this breaker has to decide if it sees the fault. And these switches at the same time have to decide if they're open or closed. So it's some very complex logic. So we'll probably want to um, configure this so we can log stuff to either a file or a text box or the console um, status of different um, variables so we can find out if all the logic is working. So clearly we're going to want some logging and debugging. Um, I found it very useful in, in developing this. So we can keep track of stuff that doesn't seem to be working and find out um, the details. So I think this is for the most part, this, these are the major building blocks we're going to need. Um, as we get into this, we're going to find out we're going to need some additional stuff. Um, again, we talked about logic. This is going to be a lot of logic to, to figure everything out here. So we're going to need probably a class to do logic. And so this is going to get more detailed, but this at least gives us a feel for the major building blocks we're going to need to develop this and how we're going to interact with these. Okay, so in the next video, I think we're going to start to dive into some of these individual uh, building blocks here, probably look at the devices and see how we can start developing classes and what the functionality should be and what the properties should be. So anyway, um, if you like any of these, please hit the like and the bell notifications and subscribe. And otherwise, take care and have a really good day. Thanks.